<laughs> we will move on to the Dogway, Dogwood, Dogwood Day Proclamation, uh, introduced by our city recorder, Scott Stauffer, and the Milwaukee Historical Society's Greg Hemer and Phyllis Hines, it looks like, yes, from the Daughters of the American Revolution. a quick second here to get... can i do the the world's largest museum dedicated no. i can't take, I can't take greg's no. line can i i think he's got that copyright <laughs> i think he does have that copyright i think he's got that tattooed on his chest <laughs> if i do you gotta harpoon me <laughs> Greg, you'll be able to control your own slides there by hitting the arrow keys. Oh. And then when you get to the video, let me know. I'll hop back over. Okay. Uh, Mayor Beatty, City Council, and City staff, thank you for having Milwaukee Historical Society, the owners and operators of the world's largest museum dedicated to Milwaukee, Oregon history, the Milwaukee Museum, now open Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., located at 3737 Southeast Adams Street, are proud to present tonight's proclamation for May 2023. Oh. Uh, Dogwood Day Proclamation. <laughs> my name is Greg Hamer, the Communications <laughs> Director. I did not change that out of my script. <laughs> Milwaukee Museum prides itself uh, ensuring our goal of preserving Milwaukee's past for future generations. Do not miss our June 7th Letting Library Lecture Series entitled The Mayors, our performance at the museum in July, August, and September, and our newest exhibit, Milwaukee's Historic Women, Activists, Leaders, and Great Personalities, opening in mid-June. We pride ourselves on free admission to all events, because as income inequality should never be a reason to enjoy great programming and learning about our great city. Happy 120 years, Milwaukee. We all know that people have occupied this land for thousands of years before we were incorporated, but tonight we celebrate that great day. Our incorporation was due to dynamite being stored in town, and now we had exploded into the best town in the city of Oregon. Over the last 120 years, we have changed, but we have still kept that small town charm with a loving community. Tonight, for your birthday, I present a gift. A gift from our community members to you, our favorite city, Milwaukee. In 2021, we started the Milwaukee 2023 project. We recorded over 50 interviews from people that have lived their whole life in Milwaukee to the newcomers. We asked five basic questions. Who are you? How long have you lived in Milwaukee? Why did you come to Milwaukee? What do you like best about Milwaukee? And what is your favorite story about Milwaukee? You can view all the interviews in their entirety on the Milwaukee Heritage YouTube channel. As our gift to the city, I have given Scott, our wonderful city recorder, a copy of the long version of the video. But tonight, because we're only limited to five minutes of time, which now we're going to stretch this out to about 15, <laughs> we have created a shorter video. <laughs> Hope you enjoy. And, oh, and by the way, Thank God for Jelani, uh, or for Josh and Melody of Willamette Files Studio because I started cutting videos and it is such a long process. The people that sit in that booth are freaking awesome because they all make us look good on MTV, Milwaukee television. <laughs> it's true. They do a great job. They do. They do a great job. <laughs> Hi, this is Governor Barbara Roberts, and I couldn't miss this opportunity 
to wish a happy birthday to the city of Milwaukee, one of my favorite cities in the entire state. So happy birthday, Milwaukee. What I really think is going to be the best part of this is we have people that are, you know, we just yeah, lost Josh. this bridge. Josh, if you can hear it, can you turn it back up a little bit? PA in the room. Really old that have all this Thank history. You. And if it's not written down or if it's not taken up like this, we talk about all these people coming and moving in. There'll be nothing to give them. They don't work here. They only live here. And so if we don't have something to give them, you can't expect them to embrace Milwaukee. So that's why I think it's important and uh, definitely wish it a, a happy 120th. Okay, my name is Alice Roden now. As I grew up, it was Alice Kiltz. Well, the name is Harley Brown. Everybody called me Brownie. My name is Bob Galway. I'm married to Patty. Brown Benson. Chris Davis. Champ A. Houston. So uh, I'm Corey Beckman, formerly Corey Lights. My name is Daniel Andrews. Dave Ashenbrenner. Like David Tyler. Hi, I'm David Parker. Well, I was born Debbie Schreiber. Um, I, I've been Debbie Lipton forever so long. That's a Nicodemus. My name is Dick Mountain. My name is Ben Knight. My name is Honey Shibata Bennett. Yeah, I'm Janet Cargill. Uh, my name is Joel Bergman. Uh, my name is Sean Smith. My name is Kay Endel. My name is Ken. I'm Gary Klein. Uh, I was born October 23rd, 19th. 1946, and uh, Ronald Klein, uh, uh, the number two in the family, and uh, uh, September 10, 1945. And Doug Klein, or Douglas Klein, I was born uh, November 8, 1932. Uh, Larry Turgino. It's Lisa Lashbrook. Stephen Lashbrook. Uh, my name is Linda Carr. So my name is Lisa Ann, with an E, Kenyon Rinker. My name is Lyle Phelps. Yeah. So, my name is Marty Hanley. I am the supervisor of the Milwaukee Community Center. Michael Mantel. Molly, Molly Douglas. Um, I'm Nancy Samuel Whitty and Pam Denham. <laughs> I'm Patty Cowlight. Robert Massey. Okay. Hi, Sabina. Thank you for doing this with us. Hi, Sabina. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Sabina <laughs> Spencer. Spicer. Uh, he's got Spencer here. I know. I'm going gray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your last name. Uh, uh, I'm Scott Barber. <laughs> Uh, Terry Geyer Brindell. My name is Tina Kirk. Wes. And you have a last name? Yeah. You're up, Jen. Okay. Uh, okay, fine. My name is Wilda Parks. <laughs> My name is Adrian Thomas. <laughs> I was born at Dwyer Memorial Hospital in 1969. My sister and I were the first twins born in the hospital. Oh. 62 years as a pharmacist in Milwaukee. And well. Yeah, I was the fifth oldest pharmacist, licensed pharmacist in the state. <laughs> And I actually grew up at uh, 40th and Adams. And uh, that was our homestead that we got in 1894. There's a library down here in Milwaukee. That's not far. I'm going to go there. The library was easy to find. Pamphlets were all nice and neatly stacked. I took five from my complex and my apartment, and it was perfect. And so that first put Milwaukee on the map for me. Well, actually, uh, my wife used to live here. She lived here for quite some time. And uh, she's always loved Milwaukee. We have friends in Milwaukee. It's uh, always been a part of her heart. Kellogg Park. Oh. Opened up, and I can't. It was just off on Highway 99, right? Just north of the town. And so, when defense housing was available, we moved up there. So, I went to first and second grade in Milwaukee. We came to Milwaukee for just that, for the community, for the small town kind of vibes, um, and the nature too. We love how much nature is here. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Everyone's best and loved about Milwaukee. I love the people. I love how the neighbors are so welcoming. And I love the farmer's market, which we are at today. And, um, I think it's a city that really activates its citizenship. And I love seeing the level of involvement go up, it feels like, over the years. Watching, you know, young families continue to want to move here. Uh, boy, it's just such a pleasant place to live. You know, we've got some land and, and uh, we've got the creek running through our backyard and we just love it. I like to take my grandchildren to where I went to when I was a child, and a lot of those places are no longer around. I took my children to Perry Pharmacy not too long ago, and we had ice cream sundaes there. And so that was really nice to get to sit on the benches or the stools that I used to do as a kid and drink green phosphates and, you know, just hang out at the counter. And... <laughs> So, you know, in the liquor store there, and, and my dad and I would go in there, and you weren't supposed to have kids in there in those days. And I'd go in with my dad, and he'd go over, and he drank black velvet, so he'd go over and get a pint, take it up, and, and uh, Bullhander would say, well, he says, you know, that's 495 or something like that. He'd tell me, he says, well, I don't have it right now. Can you put it on my tab? And he'd get his little book out, and there was like a little page in there, and he'd write it down. And there. My dad was always good for it. It was just, you know, they had a lot of money back then. Yeah. And then he'd say, you know, I'd like to take Barb out to get a bite to eat. He wouldn't have 20 bucks I could borrow with him. He'd get a bottle, he'd get 20 we were fortunate, the three of us, to be on a football team uh, when it went to the state championship and to watch the city, the community, that's where the Mayberry came out to celebrate, even though we lost, they celebrated with us, they, uh, they all took us and gave us dinner and... Yeah, uh, I'm working on my thesis project with the Hadleys, who opened the first Rockland Bakery in the world. Yeah, I'm sorry. One very cool piece of many wonderful places in the history of Portland. And he, one good thing he did, my dad died in uh, 42, March 42, uh, he was cremated, and then he put they put him in a brass urn, and he and my, he told my mom and says, "I'll hold that urn for you." Uh -huh. And when we got back, we went after the uh, urn, and at that time we were we were uh, living at Coyote's greenhouses. And the first thing he I, I went with her, and the first thing he said, he says. She was, she said they lived in Wichita, and he says, what's Wichita? Because he was from Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> and he gave her the room, and he never charged her anything for her. Wow. Or since uh, holding it. So the people in Milwaukee were, were exceptionally fine people. You know, I'd have to say the, the Milwaukee Museum, actually, because, you know, for a, for a small town to have this museum that, you know, um, curates everything that happened in Milwaukee is pretty amazing because the people are allowed to contribute to the museum and, you know, in other cities, other bigger cities and even smaller cities, you wouldn't be able to get that kind of uh, participation or engagement from the city. So, I would say the Milwaukee team is like, I know it's not a story, but it's one of my favorite things about. I did not pay Disney to do that. <laughs> Happy birthday, Milwaukee. You, you've aged beautifully. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Well, sure. Happy anniversary to 120 years. 120. Yes. Oh, happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. I'm really glad to live here, and I want to continue doing that till the day I die. Yeah, happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy 120th. Yes, I was around for your 100th birthday, and I'm happy to be around for your 120th. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Yeah, it's hard to believe it's 120 years already, and yes, absolutely. Happy, happy birthday, Milwaukee, and here's to another 120, right? Yeah. Yay. 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 Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, my hometown, Milwaukee. Happy birthday.
Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. <laughs> Happy 120th anniversary, Milwaukee. Congratulations. Keep up the good work. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. I know I haven't been here for 120 years, but sometimes it feels like it. And I'm very proud and look forward to many more birthdays with you. Um, well, Milwaukee, uh, 120 years is looking good on you. This is Bon Campanano, Archita, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. You're looking good. Happy anniversary, city of Milwaukee, 120 years. It's always strong. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Milwaukee's always been good to me and, and our family, and we hope to see you for another 120 years at least. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Thank you so much. Well, happy birthday, City of Milwaukee. It's been a pleasure growing up here in this community, and I'm looking forward to a lot more years of hanging out and, and being involved. Oh. Happy birthday, Milwaukee, for 120 years. I've only been here a few of those, but I'm glad you're here. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Happy birthday, Milwaukee, Dogwood City. Happy birthday, Milwaukee. Uh, happy 120th anniversary, Milwaukee, from the Spicer family. Oh. Those people from last year. Yeah. So that is it. So, and Scott's got the longer version. I'm sorry. I actually tear up when I watch that because <laughs> you don't know um, the strong feeling that this community has for this town. You all are a part and a piece of it. The openness that we have to our government, the openness that we have to our community, and the feeling that we love our neighbors, you don't hear that a lot but it's here in Milwaukee. So thank you for everything that you and everyone in the audience and everyone listening on TV does. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. And thank you to the Historical Society for sponsoring that video. Uh, very well done. We have just a few more brief remarks on Dogwood Day for you, and I will let uh, introduce Phyllis Hines from the Daughters of the American Revolution. Can't follow that very well. <laughs> I could say good evening, <laughs> Mayor Beatty and the members of the council. It's nice to see you again. My name is Phyllis Hines. I'm an honorary regent of the Susanna Lee Barlow chapter of Daughters of the American Revolution. The missions of DAR are to promote historic preservation, education, and patriotism. May is Historic Preservation Month. In 1920, DAR chapters were charged with, and I quote, it is the desire of the National Society that every chapter collect data re relative to historic spots in its vicinity, and if not otherwise marked, to memorialize them. Markers are now uh, currently for people, places, and events. This chapter's first marker was dedicated in 1923. In 1952, the chapter dedicated the dogwood tree marker, commemorating the tree's scenic contribution to the community. It was a bronze plaque placed on the home grounds where the tree was located on Harrison Street. The inscription was Dogwood Tree, the native Pacific dogwood, over 100 years old, the largest in the United States, height 65 feet, circumference seven feet. Susanna Lee Barlow chapter, DAR, April 27, 1952. The Susanna Lee Barlow chapter of DAR is proud to be in partnership with the city of Milwaukee and the Milwaukee Historical Society on the celebration of Dogwood Day and Milwaukee's history. Our involvement this year included judging uh, the many wonderful Dogwood photographs. And as uh, supporting education is a priority in our chapter, we um, sent the city's Dogwood packets to the elementary school, Milwaukee elementary schools we included a list of K-2 social studies standards, which are met through the study of historic community. Your inclusion of the Susanna Lee Dar Barlow chapter in Dogwood Day Proclamation is an honor. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Phyllis. And uh, so the city commemorates uh, Dogwood Day in a few ways. We're going to be present at the Sunday at the Markey Farmers Market this Sunday. We'll have a booth out in front of City Hall, and uh, staff will be there, and we'll have all kinds of, of course, the the postcard, and we have a new edition of the the sticker and the Dogwood sticker. And we may also have some, some sunglasses for folks to pick up this year, and members of council got those. So come by this Sunday. Um, the market hours are 9.30 to 2, I believe. And then for, I believe, the fifth year, we've done an, we have done did an Instagram photo contest. If folks uh, take a picture between mid-April to mid-May uh, as the dogwoods bloom, uh, and they post it on publicly visible Instagram accounts and use the hashtag Milwaukee Dogwood. Uh, we had 16 so photos submitted that way this year. Thank you to all who participated. It was really a hard decision to make. There were some gorgeous photos. The Dogwood is really quite photogenic. And we have an amazing cadre of photographers in our community. Uh, and uh, so our winners this year, as selected by the staff and volunteer committee, uh, are from Noah Rudder with his um, one on there on the middle or middle of the slide, or the, the one on the left, and then um, Kelsey Allen on the right with the bright, vibrant, uh, both both the pink dogwoods, uh, both variations of the dogwood. Um, so thank you to Kelsey and Noah for submitting them as uh, the winners of this year's contest. Please come by City Hall and pick up your Dogwood Day packet, which includes a puzzle, a Dogwood Day po puzzle of the photo of the postcard, as well as the stickers and postcards and sunglasses. So Noah and Kelsey, if you're listening, we did reach out to you on Instagram. And I know you were communicating with Jordan Imla. And so we hope you come by at the city hall and pick that up. Stop by the market this, uh, this weekend. And with that, I think, uh, Mayor Beatty, if you wouldn't mind reading the proclamation. Whereas the Pacific dogwood Cornus dutalii was nurtured and cultivated by the earliest settler, settlers of the Milwaukee area, including the Clackamas people who used the dogwood to weave baskets and make other utensils. And whereas the Oregon State Legislature incorporated the town of Milwaukee on May 21st, 1903, after years of organized community action that sought to seek local control of the area's infrastructure and shared spaces. And whereas on April 27th, 1952, a plaque was placed by the Susanna Lee Barlow chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution at the home of Milwaukee's first mayor, William Schindler, to mark the location of the then largest native Pacific dogwood in the United States, which stood at 65 feet in height and seven feet in circumference. And whereas on July 9th, 1962, the city council designated the Pacific Dogwood as the city's official flower and the Dogwood City of the West as the city's nickname. And whereas the people of Milwaukee continue to appreciate the Pacific Dogwood and other dogwood species by planting them in yards, parks, and shared spaces. And whereas by designating May 21st as Dogwood Day, Milwaukee continues to recognize the beauty of the dogwood blossom as an emblem of our shared commitment to the earth and to each other. Now, therefore, I, Lisa Beatty, mayor of the city of Milwaukee, a municipal corporation in the county of Clackamas in the state of Oregon, do hereby proclaim May 21st, 2023, to be Dogwood Day in Milwaukee, the Dogwood City of the West. All right, so stop by the farmer's market. It's going to be a much nicer week at the farmer's market this week than last time. Uh, than last week when it was so hot. So, yeah, stop by and cross, come across to the... City Hall driveway and grab some dogwood swag. All right, well, thank you.